It's Christmas time, and what better way to decorate the tree in the office than with your own 3D printed Christmas ornaments. My name's Tyler, and I'm a designer at an architecture firm here in California. I'm in my office today, and we're gonna 3D print some ornaments for the tree here. So this is kind of my thing. I love Christmas for all the usual reasons. The warm sweaters, vacation time, putting up Christmas decorations. This is the time of year that I pull out my little tree at home for my room. Now the other thing I like to do is 3D printing. I'm kind of known for it in the office as the go-to guy for 3D printing. Now sometimes it's for architectural concept models and sometimes it's just for fun. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to put these two things together and help decorate the tree here at work with some cool 3D printed ornaments. All right, so the ornaments I'm using here today, I got from a website called thingiverse.com. Thingiverse is a website dedicated to the sharing of user-created digital design files. Anyone can make something digitally and upload it here for others to use. So I found 3D models of ornaments that other people made and then downloaded them so I can put them through my computer software and then 3D print them here. This all sounds pretty complicated, but I promise you it's really not. I'll leave links in the description box below so I can give credit to the original designers for these ornaments. And also just in case any of you want to print these yourself. The 3D printer I'm using is called the MakerBot Replicator 2. This is an older model from MakerBot and there's so many other types of 3D printers out there, but this is an easy one to use. Plus it's the only thing I have available in the office, so I use it when I can. So this is the print bed here. I'll go ahead and get it out. Now the overall size that this printer can do is 11 inches by six inches by six inches tall. Now all of the ornaments I'm gonna be printing today are small enough to fit inside this boundary. And I'm gonna be using a white plastic filament for these prints. Now I can use any color I want, really, but I think white is gonna look best in contrast to the dark green of the Christmas tree. So the first one we have here is this simple snowflake shape. I downloaded the files from Thingiverse and it gives me the 3D object files that I need to open in my computer software. This is where I have to define the settings for the 3D printer, like how much plastic to use, where exactly I want it to be on the print bed, and even how big I want it to be. I like this snowflake because it's fast and simple to print. Even though it may look like a complicated shape, it's actually really easy because of the thickness of it and because of the way the printer handles it. How the 3D printer works is by taking this object and slicing it into layers. It prints one layer at a time and then moves up to the next one to build the whole object. So it'll lay down melted plastic filament to create an overall outline of each layer and then it infills that outline with this hexagon pattern. And since each layer is the same as the layer below it, the printer just stacks these layers on top of each other until the whole thing is finished. There's even a small little opening at the top of it so you can use a hook to hang it on the tree. All right, this next one's one of my favorites. It's called the Dancing Snowman and you'll see why it's called that in a minute. So again, I have the model here that I downloaded and I'll define the settings for the 3D printer and my software first. You'll see as I'm slicing through it that there's two parts on this and one just fits inside the other. This is what makes the snowman dance. The two parts never touch each other, and the outside part is just slightly bigger than the inside part. So when it finishes printing, the smaller piece is trapped inside because of the round shape. Since the two pieces are separate but close together, they move independently. He really only has two dance moves. This one, or this one. But hey, they're both better than mine. This is called the flex tree. And yes, it actually flexes. No, no, not quite like that. You might look at this one and think, okay, what's so special about it? It's just a regular tree shape. But the way it's made is what makes it unique. First, we have the gap between the branches. It's spaced out evenly at each branch, 
which is what allows each one enough room to move. What really makes this flex is the spine of the tree. It's made so thin that it's able to bend, but not so thin that it breaks. I'm sure if I really tried and bent this thing in half, it'd probably break, but I'm not here to ruin Christmas. And the star on top is a great place to hook it so we can hang it on the tree. Now this one's really cool for multiple reasons. We'll start off first with what it is. It's called a gyroscope. Now this is normally a device used for measuring or maintaining orientation and angular velocity. Gyroscopes are used in compasses, automatic pilots on ships and aircrafts, and many other things. Your phone even has a type of gyroscope on it to tell the phone where it is in 3D space, whether it's rotated, upside down in your pocket or flat on the table. So this is a different take on that gyroscope to make it into a Christmas ornament. The cool thing about this is that it printed flat on the bed just like this. And what makes it spin is really crazy. On each ring, there's two small indents on the inside and two small bumps on the outside. The next ring fits inside the larger one so the bumps from the smaller ring fit just inside the indents of the larger ring. The printer keeps these layers separated, so when it's all done, the smaller ring can spin freely inside the larger ring. And when it's done printing, it comes out flat just like this. But when you pull it off the print bed, you can rotate each ring and open it up to create the gyroscope shape. So there's actually four variations to this next one. These are called dew drops. I guess it's supposed to look like a drop of water. I'm not really sure, but the shape is pretty cool. So here's a good example of why I need to put the 3D model through my computer software first before printing it. When I drag in the file I downloaded, the objects come in on their side. So I need to rotate them first. If I left them on their side like that, it would make the printing process way more complicated. Once it's vertical, it's easier for the printer to stack up the layers. And I want all of these to print at the same time. So I need to drag in each one, rotate it, and place it on the print bed. So like I said earlier, there's four different variations on this dewdrop ornament because of the pattern that's on the outside. It's the same dewdrop shape, but the outside is a simple series of lines or dots to give it a unique pattern. Each one of these is a little different. I like this crisscross pattern one the most, but which one do you like? Hopefully everyone in my office likes these ornaments on the tree. Leave a comment below for your favorite ornament here. And let me know what else you want to see me 3D print next. But that's going to be it for now. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and thanks for watching.